the presentation time is 30 minutes please welcome jim with applause Yeah, so here I'm going to present a story about uh, modernizing development workflow for a large scale Python project using Pantsbuild uh, with migration to mono repository. So uh, I'm working as a CTO in LabRub, a Korean startup to build an AI development and service platform called uh, Backend.ai to make AI accessible for everyone. Uh, the name of LabRub, uh, my team name, is taken from a Konglish word, uh, Label Upgrade, or in English, Upgrade the Laboratory. So uh, here is a brief introduction about myself. So I, has been, I have been working on um, an open source project called Backend.ai for more than seven years, uh, since 2015. So I daily use and contribute to many open source projects and uh, focusing on backend engineering and systems programming and distributed and accelerated computing. So uh, my recent interest is to write code uh, that can be read and updated even three years later because now I'm seeing uh, like five years ago uh, the codes I have written five years ago and I need to still update those codes. So yeah, I'm now like thinking about how uh, the long-term software engineering should go. and. Um, uh, I gave uh, many serial talks in PyCon KR uh, about AsyncIO related topics, and uh, this is actually my first talk in PyCon JP. So I'm very glad to see the JP audience face to face. So as mentioned in the title, this talk will cover uh, why and how the backend AI project employed the monorepo architecture using PantsBuild. So in the first part, I will uh, briefly review the motivation uh, behind the mono repository and the uh, problems in our uh, previous development workflows. And uh, I will give a sh very short introduction to PantsBuild and how we migrated uh, our repositories into mono repository. And then uh, some additional customization work that was needed to uh, fully integrate. And uh, after then, I uh, will uh, summarize the talk with uh, 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 experience after the migration. So first, uh, let's talk about why monorepo matters. So uh, the first point is that dependency management in software engineering is a hard problem. And uh, long-term software engineering is actually all about uh, it. So uh, for short-lived short toy projects or prototypes, uh, we don't need to think very hard about dependencies but uh, just fix their like versions and we can assume the like a consistent behavior and that will not change within like a force over future. Uh, but uh, if the lifetime of a software goes beyond like five years, then uh, suddenly the importance of upgradability uh, becomes very high and uh, uh, as uh, shown in the graph here, uh, uh, taken from the book called like uh, software engineering in Google. So I found that this book is displayed on the like a sponsor booth of O'Reilly in this conference venue. So you can just uh, check out if you have interested in it here. And I highly recommend it for uh, reading for like uh, from junior developers to like a uh, senior managers as well. Uh, anyway, so uh, the backend AI project is now passing like seven years, and uh, we are facing lots of technical challenges to keep up with such upgradability. So, for example, we have gone through the Python version 3.4 to 3.11, and uh, also we have experienced the whole the evolution path of AsyncIO library and its ecosystem. Uh, for, exa or, for example, we also have replaced our underlying database adapters like several times, and uh, we sometimes we had to write our own library to cover like a deprecation of some libraries. 
So uh, even in wider view, uh, hardware technology changes also affects our project. For example, uh, when Apple released its uh, first M1 laptops, and uh, uh, when our developers, our team members began to use M1 laptops, then we had to uh, make our development setup to work on these architectures. So, uh, so dependence management is hard, but uh, why does having a mono repository uh, matter uh, with dependence management issues? So, uh, dependence management is very hard uh, because we have like diamond uh, dependency conflict issues, and uh, actually many package managers implement their own ways or strategies to handle this. But sometimes this is uh, unsolvable, and uh, it becomes quite complex problem. Um, uh, moreover, existing uh, package managers usually focus on handling only external uh, dependencies, which are not written by us. Uh, usually, they just fetch those from remote registries and check their version compatibilities. Uh, and uh, but uh, they make the like a version management of such external dependencies as someone else's problem. Uh, but uh, the hidden challenges arises when the history of a project goes very long, um, especially about the internal dependency management. Because internal interactions are often not explicitly documented and or do not have versioned APIs. So uh, they tend to have more number of uh, like a dependency relationships between our internal components. So uh, I, there are like many ways to remedy this problem, but I think in the perspective of a repository organization, there are two major ways, multiple repositories or having a mono repository. So, uh, on the internet, you can search about many, many discussions about like pros and cons of uh, multi-repository approach or mono-repository. So, uh, multi-repository architecture excels in the independent development of multiple components, having strict and well-defined, well-versioned APIs. Uh, uh, in contrast, monorepository is good for uh, cross-component refactoring and having a holistic view of the entire system. So um, I think there is no single right answer here uh, that fits every situation. So I think it is more about how you and your teams uh, develop and collaborate with each other and how much coupled the components are. For example, uh, if the components have many uh, direct type references or like rely on uh, unversioned uh, private APIs, then I think it may be better to manage them with a mono repository. So, uh, I have chose the mono repository approach for my project. So, uh, to simplify management of internal dependencies. So, uh, in the software engineering in Google book, uh, they are, they, it says uh, they are uh, strictly applying the one version rule, uh, which states that any specific component should exist as only one single version uh, to avoid any diamond dependency conflicts. So uh, to realize this rule, uh, all developers should be able to see uh, the source code of our entire system and any API change of the dependent components. So uh, here comes the mono repository. So the challenge uh, when uh, adopting the mono repository at a large scale uh, is that it requires a good tool chain or modern build system. Uh, especially when you are going to build multiple packages from a single mono repository, uh, the build system should be able to determine multiple sets of dependency clusters for each package, and while uh, reducing duplicate operations across the packages uh, to speed up the entire process. So, uh, in this section, I will review the uh, specific problems with uh, my team's previous development workflows. So first, we use per package GitHub repositories. So uh, one Python package had corresponded to one single GitHub repository. And this allows using standard Python packaging toolchains, and it is very simple to set up. 
Uh, but uh, we, since we have many multiple repositories and components to uh, run a like, minimal working setup of backend AI, we had to install uh, multiple repositories together. And we had a small uh, script called uh, installdiv.sh to automate this process process with a single command. Actually, this uh, script is quite like large, and as it handles all the like repeated uh, tasks to uh, install and configure things. Uh, the setup, uh, initial setup was simple, but uh, many problems became uh, apparent as the project site grows. So the most uh, prominent problem was to, that we had to write and review multiple pull requests for a single conceptual issue. So both engineers and reviewers, we ha often forgot to switch the Git branches between multiple repositories. And this led to uh, strange errors in local testing environments. And we had an un implicit rule to synchronize the branch names between interdependent component uh, to pass the CI with, uh, because there are internal dependencies between the components. Uh, this kind of uh, stuff has increased the context switching overheads for both developers and the reviewers. And moreover, uh, GitHub is not actually very friendly to work with multi-repo style issue management. So uh, the issue resolution from multiple linked pull requests is considered as OR combination instead of AND combination. So just resolving one single pull request uh, mark the entire issue resolved while other linked pull requests are still ongoing. And um, uh, GitHub code space is a very nice uh, feature, uh, but uh, it works only with a single repository. And uh, configuring it for like a multi-repository setup is very uh, like cumbersome. And uh, uh, GitHub project version two has a very nice like uh, uh, overlooking board view, grid view of the many issues, uh, but uh, it still does not provide cross repo cross-repository labels or milestones, so we need to configure many uh, stuffs and repeat it for each repository. So um, uh, this kind of problems has also increased other uh, problems. So for example, uh, we began to hesitate to refactor across the repository. So uh, we began to prefer uh, reducing maintenance points because we have so many repositories. Uh, instead of splitting uh, the code components by clear purposes and semantics. So our, it also made uh, the release process quite, quite time consuming because I had to release n times when there are n changes over n components and n repositories for a single bug fix or feature addition. So I had to keep the order of release release uh, to prevent breaking of CI CD pipelines uh, due to internal dependencies as well. So or, and uh, there is another problem. So I, uh, our like on-site engineering steps uh, felt hard to keep track of uh, the compatible set of comp component versions, uh, version combinations when they are upgrading or patching the customer sites. So uh, because uh, often, even a patch level uh, version update introduced incomp incompatible changes uh, when there are internal dependencies involved between the components. So to resolve these problems, we decided to go monorepository. So uh, currently, the level of organization in GitHub has more than 200 repositories, including private ones. Uh, but I chose to begin evaluation of this approach with backend.ai's core components only. So I call this approach as a semi-monorepository. So uh, fortunately, uh, we are not as big as Google, so we don't have to worry about like extreme scalability issues like in Google. Uh, so I just uh, set the cri criteria to include a component in a monorepository as uh, it should be an open source one and share the same release cycle and uh, should have uh, cross internal dependencies with each other. 
Uh, but when uh, introducing the mono repository, the challenges and concerns is that how to automate the internal dependence management and how to run test and CI only for the changed components or modules for each setup, each like a commit and pre request. Uh, so I conclude that we need some kind of uh, modern build system. So that's where the pants build comes in. So I discovered the pants while searching for mono repository build systems for Python. So uh, there is another well known one, uh, which is called Google's Bazel. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it has too much things to learn and a heavy burden to have, uh, write configurations. And uh, actually, I had a ver very bad experience on uh, using it when building, when trying to build the uh, custom TensorFlow. Uh, the pants uh, on the other side uh, is currently version two, so it uh, has a proven uh, working history, and uh, it has priority support for the Python ecosystem, and all the includes. Uh, includes all the modern features as listed here. So uh, I have attached some links to uh, help you understand how it works and the how it differs from other systems uh, in this slide. So please refer them later. Um, so this is a simple uh, demo taken from the PantsBuild official website, and uh, it uh, shows that it learns many lint tasks in parallel. So it can actually uh, accelerate your CI workflows to a great extent uh, once properly configured. Uh, from the user's perspective, uh, the pa uh, Pants architecture uh, consists of uh, Pants enabled repository consists of uh, pants.toml, the configuration file, and the build configurations for uh, individual directories to define what to build and what their dependencies are. Uh, the Pants itself is uh, composed of uh, Python based rule engine and a Rust based DAG task scheduler and a variety of intrinsic plugins to support a number of programming languages. Uh, the Rust engine uh, is an artifact orient supports artifact-oriented caching and async execution and parallelization, uh, while it's implemented using Tok.io, which is a famous uh, asynchronous uh, programming library in Rust, and provides the base engine for async await runtime for the Python frontend. So under Pants, there is another component called the Pax, which uh, works like a Python's virtual env manager uh, with external dependence resolution. Um, so when you apply Pants to your project, you first need to download the Pants script and write the con build configuration files, and then run and Pants then just run. Then Pants will uh, self bootstrap and with its own runtime and all its dependencies in a separate temporary directory. And it will then uh, run your project uh, build configurations. The Pants command is, consists of two main arguments. The goal uh, for what action to do and the targets for which path sets to work on. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to cover all the gory details about the pants. So you can just uh, uh, refer uh, our team's daily workflow documents uh, attached in uh, here as a cheat sheet. So uh, here is the actual migration process. So uh, these are the list of merged repositories. So we have a several server-side components, including manager, web server, and storage proxy, and agent, and comma, and so on. And we also had the client-side components called uh, for the official client SDK. And uh, uh, we also changed the development setup using mono repository uh, to embed separate clones from plugins and the front-end repository, which are not included in the mono repository, uh, using the same directory architecture. So uh, this is uh, how the final merged directory structure looks like. So along with the pants.toml and build configurations and the main lock files, uh, sources, test suites, and configuration examples, fixtures, are uh, placed under per component directories under uh, topic directories. And documents, scripts, and the unified version and requirements.txt files are, are all in unified 
uh, places. And we have a special directory called tools uh, that hosts the pants plugins and additional lock files uh, for pants uh, based tools. And also added uh, some helper scripts like uh, dot slash py and so on. So uh, all components in this mono repository shares the same unified version number uh, as shown here. So overall, the migration uh, took like one month. And you can see the whole process and the history in the pull request number 415 in our GitHub repository. It's public, so you can just go there and uh, uh, look how what happened there. And uh, uh, also, we had a several uh, more like a follow up pull request to refine our CI process and uh, afterwards. So, uh, I have performed more than 60 technical Q&A in the Pants community Slack and uh, made many bug reports, feature requests, and documentation patches for both Pants and PEX. So uh, I was very impressed that Pants build team uh, was very uh, responsive to handle all the like re bug reports and the UCG questions and so on uh, made by me. Uh, and it was very interesting that because Pants build team and I were on the opposite side of yours, so the time zone was completely different. So when uh, I used to uh, evaluate some Pants features in daytime in uh, here, Japan standard time or Korean standard time. And then I report to some box on in the dinner time in, in their Slack or GitHub. Then they uh, check it in the night and uh, fix uh, while I sleeping and the release in the morning. Then I wake up and uh, I then I uh, tested it again. So this release through this like a continuous, uh, relentless uh, release cycle was very uh, uh, helped to uh, fix the problems uh, in a quick way. Uh, but also, we had to customize pants because, as you see, uh, mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, we, I had to go through a lot of like a QA. So, uh, because just adopting pants did not solve all of our problems. So, uh, yeah, here is the story. So, uh, Pants has a basic setup.py generator plugin, uh, but uh, we customize it to conditionally set license and trove classifiers and other attributes based on the component directory content. Uh, so um, it is also the official example of the Pants plugin, so I could do it relatively easily, uh, but it was uh, very uh, uh, Interesting that the file system access uh, from the Pants plugin should be done via a special API uh, and using uh, Pants' own Rust engine, uh, which applies artifact caching automatically. Another small plugin to or was to add a new Python tool plugin for Towncrier. So Towncrier is a small uh, tool that automatically generates release notes from uh, new fragment files in a specific directory of the repository. So Pants abstracts various linters and test frameworks as Python tool, and I just added yet another one in the same way. Uh, and this was the most challenging one. So uh, in backend, I, we had to include a target platform-specific pre-built binaries uh, to run Docker containers uh, when building from a single platform. So I had to do some kind of dependency injection uh, depending on runtime configurations. So uh, yeah, to resolve this issue, I had multiple Q&A in the Pants community Slack, and I got some assistance from the author of Pants', Pants uh, official Docker build backend author. So uh, yeah, I could do it finally. Uh, but uh, this like dependency management was heavily affected by the internal structure of Pants. So I sometimes I had to rewrite several times when I upgrade Pants versions. But I think it's gonna be stabilized sooner or later. Um, and another big hurdle for adopting Pants in backend AI was that the dynamic module loading. So backend.ai largely depends on the entry points of package metadata. 
uh, for dynamic plugins and module detection from virtual environments. Uh, unfortunately, the punch run command does not have package metadata or internal dependencies or build configs inside the PEX environments. So there was no entry points information available, so there was no modules loaded uh, automatically. So, uh, yeah, so we are relying on something like uh, editable installation in the standard Python tool chain, uh, but which which is not yet supported in pants. So we wrote to two things. So the first one is a custom module loader that searches and parses build configurations using the AST module, and uh, uh, on a, a custom runner script that auto in automatically enables the exported virtual RAM, uh, which contains all the uh, unified dependencies in a single virtual environment. Yep. So. That is how we did the migration. And uh, here is the uh, summary for the experience uh, after the migration. Uh, so the first satisfying points uh, was that uh, we decreased the time for uh, making a new release from hours to just a, like a more or less 10 minutes. Because we can build packages in parallel at once, and uh, we can do it, and we can trust it, because uh, already we have tested uh, all the components as a whole system, and our pants can parallelize the build uh, process. Uh, also, we could automate it, improve the automation of release workflows, such as like pasting the last latest version change logs into GitHub releases and uh, things like that, uh, because we only needed to do it once for the mono repository instead of repeating like six times and more. And um, uh, it greatly improved our code review process and the speed uh, because now one issue completes one single pull request with a single file tree and a single diff. And uh, even documentation changes are all included in a single view. Uh, and uh, now we can utilize GitHub features in better ways, including the project board, issue trackers, and code space, and so on. Um, uh, especially, uh, Pants uh, provides a very uh, good option uh, called Changed Scenes, uh, which is selects the only the changed modules over uh, the last commit or some like branch. So it takes a diff and calculates the affected modules uh, by analyzing internal dependencies. Uh, but of course, we had some hassles and uh, also needed to, need to do some adaptations. For example, uh, handling multiple Python versions in the system, it made a big harder for new, de new developers. For example, in macOS, Python 3.9 is required to run pants, uh, but it may be missing depending on how you install Pythons. And um, actually, uh, yeah, this can be resolved with a simple comments, but uh, yeah, for like an, uh, developers who has no experiences, uh, issues like that and uh, error messages, then uh, yeah, it may be like very challenging to uh, handle this. And uh, we also have suffered from several like import errors, uh, which was not seen before, uh, due to uh, punch specific Python path management and dynamic import uh, support. So, uh, particularly, dynamic imports uh, is not supported by punch because uh, punches, punches on static analysis cannot detect the dependency uh, like made from like a code. Uh, code dynamically, uh, as seen here. So uh, in that case, I had to manually specify these dependencies in build files, uh, and I'm currently looking for some way to improve the situation by augmenting the source code with uh, specific comment patterns or like uh, like annotations. Yeah. And uh, another hassle was that uh, parallelization of the test suite. So uh, previously, we ran all tests in Syria. So uh, I it did not have any concerns for parallelization. So um, overlapping port numbers uh, by the containers created as fixtures, uh, we uh, had to resolve this issue by using ephemeral uh, ports automatically assigned by operating system and add the, add the execution slot number to the base port number and so on. 
Also, there was a big temporary directory issues because the Docker installed by uh, Snap uses a private virtual temporary directory. So uh, we uh, had to work around using some uh, current working directory. So it, this is not the pants on problem, but uh, this is a common potential pitfall uh, when you first parallelize in your test suite. So here is the summary of my experience. So uh, it took quite a long time, more than expected, uh, but I think it was worth enough. So uh, there was no slowdown due to having monorepository architecture uh, for our CI/CD pipelines, and uh, we could uh, uh, reduce the engineering burden a lot. So we have improved our development process, introducing like a black and a, a more lean tools, and also we could exploit new features of GitHub in better ways. Uh, but we now have a new concern to, about like ma issue management. So for example, how to unify management of a private and public issues together, like the code in the monorepository. Um, I was very impressed by the sub community support of the Pants build, and uh, it was, I think, the greatest experience ever for uh, any open source projects I have seen. So I highly recommend to consider Pants for the Python-based monorepositories if we are considering uh, adopting one. And um, uh, since I have skipped the brief introduction of uh, what backend.ai project is about, so uh, in short, it's a kind of a, a platform to uh, develop and operate AI services. So it's an open source project where all core components are uh, publicly available and uh, with some optional enterprise plugins. Um, so, uh, also we are doing a small exhibition in the Japan IT week, uh, in after two weeks. So if you have more questions, then you can visit there. Yeah, that's all my talk and thank you for listening today. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. So the, I see there are some questions on the slide. Uh, could PANS be integrated with other package management tools than setup tools, example poetry? Uh, uh, yeah, PANS supports uh, is, uh, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can configure a uh, different backend for the de dependency resolution so that it can rely on poetry and uh, yeah, I think it supports poetry. Uh, but uh, I think it's better to migrate the uh, entire uh, build chain to Pants uh, to fully exploit the full like, capability of Pants. Yeah. How has your team migrated your application without any breaks? Or like, example, reconcile output code with old and new approaches? Uh, yeah, so I just ceased all <laughs> development and put uh, like a dedicated migration period. And uh, uh, for some long running pull requests and branches, then uh, we have migrated uh, separately after uh, migrating the main repository to the monorepo. Yeah. So how uh, you have persuaded your team since the members might be used the traditional multi-repos approach? Uh, Actually, uh, when I first uh, introduced this approach, uh, many members were uh, agreed uh, with the philosophy of the approach because they were already experiencing the same issues I listed in the presentation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but there was some concern about the scalability issues and uh, like a slowdown of CI CD pipelines and things like that. Uh, so, I uh, performed some like early prototyping uh, using a separate uh, branch and then showed that. Uh, Showed them that we have, we will have, we, uh, we will not have such problems. Yeah. So, could Pan manage transitive dependencies like poetry and pip tools using a log file? Uh, pardon? So, could Pan manage transitive dependencies uh, using uh, management tools like poetry? Uh, yeah, Pan ha uh, has its own log files and. Uh, uh, yeah, I think at some previous uh, several versions ago, Pants used uh, like a poetry lock files as a compatibility layer, but uh, now it has its own lock files. So yeah, you can uh, have like a 
consistent and reproducible build environments. So does Pant handle Python package uh, C, C++ extensions? Uh, yeah, it handles as uh, well uh, as long as the package can be built into our uh, real packages. Yeah. Thank you so much for your presentations. Everybody, please give a huge round of applause for the speaker. Yeah, thank you. And if you have any questions, would like to talk to the speaker directly, uh, please go to the hallway open space. The speaker will be around. So we are.